At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. News 46 is brought to you by... Healthcare Partners and Humana. And brought to you by Barry Levinson and Associates, Harumph's Bankruptcy Center. When it comes to important matters like bankruptcy, call an experienced, compassionate attorney. Call the Bankruptcy Center of Harumph. Call 775 727 4747. And brought to you by Tire Works Total Car Care, not your typical tire and service company. Guaranteed lowest prices on tires, your one-stop shop for all automotive needs. Call 775-751-6100 or 702-365-TIRE. Tonight on News 46, Republicans continue to hold on to the Congressional District 2 seat. And one man is injured following an early morning vehicle versus bicycle accident. And the Bob Rood Community Center gets a report card. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Wednesday, September 14th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Topping our news tonight, the winner is Mark Amity. Dan O'Donnell reports. The results of the vote in the special election in the 2nd Congressional District went the way that most pundits have predicted. Republican and former state senator Mark Amaday will assume the seat vacated with the appointment of Dean Heller to the United States Senate. Amade jumped out in front with more than a 60% of the vote when the first results were posted from around the state. And the wide margin between the former Nevada State Republican Party chief and Democrat treasurer Kate Marshall declined only marginally. Later results showed Amade leading by 57% to 38% for Marshall of Reno. The second congressional district seat has been held exclusively by Republicans since it was created in 1981. Kate Marshall called to congratulate Amade just after 9 p.m. last night and conceded almost two hours after the polls closed. Kate Marshall will continue to serve Nevada as our state treasurer. The district, with a wide margin of Republican voters over Democrats, required a special election when Governor Brian Sandoval appointed incumbent Dean Heller to the Senate to replace GOP Senator John Anson, who resigned. The contest began with a crowded field, as Democrat Secretary of State Ross Miller said the race would be open to all comers in a ballot royale. But the state Supreme Court rejected Miller's arguments for a wide open race, saying both major parties had the right to pick their candidates. With Amadeus win, the seat will remain in the hands of a Carson City resident. Heller is also a capital city resident. The district encompasses 16 of Nevada's 17 counties and a small part of Clark County. The district has more than a 30,000 Republican voter edge, but there are also more than 60,000 independent voters. Amade's win won't mean a rest from campaigning. He will have to run for a full term in the 2012 election. Amade said he planned to leave today for Washington, D.C., and hoped the House would agree to swear him in on Thursday so he can get to work even before the official vote canvas certifies the results as official. Here are the totals so far from the polls for the U.S. House District 2. 783 out of 858 precincts have reported, which is 91 percent. Republican Mark Amade got 69,761 votes, that's 58 percent. Democrat Kate Marshall got 44,255 votes, 37 percent. And Independent Helmuth Lehman got 5,033 votes, which is 4 percent. And Independent American Party Tim Fasano received 2,158 
votes, which is 2%. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. And a man riding his bike was struck by a vehicle on Blag at approximately 5.30 this morning. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. One man was transported with injuries after being struck by a vehicle on Blag and Bernard Street. Front by Fire and Rescue arrived on scene along with Nye County Sheriff's deputies to the intersection just north of Bell Vista where they found a man on the ground, his bicycle being struck by a station wagon driven by a male. The man appeared to be in his 30s who was riding his bike along the roadway in the dark. Nye County Sheriff's deputies blocked the flow of traffic in both directions while Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue Medic 2 and Engine 1 arrived on scene and transported the man to Desert View Hospital. Desert View Hospital in turn airlifted the man to UMC Trauma Center in Las Vegas. This is Deanna O'Donnell on Blag and Benarch for News 46. Nevada Highway Patrol has issued a press release regarding a fatal accident that occurred 10 miles north of the Las Vegas Motor Speedway just after 7 p.m. last night. The Southern Nevada Indiction Task Force, which consists of multiple law enforcement agencies, were working on enforcement detail on I-15 when they conducted a traffic stop on a gold Lexus four-door passenger vehicle traveling northbound on Interstate 15 at mile marker 65. That's right, the vehicle was being driven by a Hispanic male adult who had two passengers. During the traffic stop, an unknown amount of narcotics were discovered by the task force and the driver and his two passengers were taken into custody. Shortly after being placed into custody, the driver attempted to make an escape by running west across the northbound travel lanes of I-15. The driver was struck by a blue and white tractor trailer traveling north in the number one travel lane. And the driver, whose identity is being withheld due to the investigation, was pronounced dead at the scene at 1.30 a.m. by Clark County Coroner Investigator. And folks, we have an update from the Nevada Highway Patrol regarding the rollover accident which resulted in a fatality on Sunday, September 11th on US 93 and mile marker 83. The name of the victim of this accident has been released. Ronald Ray Wilkins from Pioche, Nevada died after his white Ford Escaline van rolled after crossing the highway center line. The 54-year-old man was pronounced dead at the scene. And folks, coming up, the president of Great Basin College is resigning. And the soccer season has only just begun. We'll have all this and more right after the break, so please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Their healthcare center is now open in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. Welcome back to News 46. The Bob Rood Community Center at the corner of Basin and Highway 160 has been closed for almost a year now after rains left mold inside the building. The report is now in. Well, they say you don't know what you've got till it's gone. That holds true for the Bob Rood Community Center here on Highway 160 and Basin, where the citizens of our community lost a venue for events, birthday parties, and all sorts of meetings. I'm holding a five-page report from Environmental Microbiology Labs. We received this yesterday. We're going to speak to town manager Bill Kolbarger. It's uh, basically a preliminary report from the lab in California. Converse Consulting came out last Friday and did some air quality testing. And in the report, it states that we have two major issues with two different types of mold. When that first started and you guys thought there might be mold in there, we had some testing done at that time. Was it the same labs as this or what's going on there? It was Converse Consulting who came out and did it. I'm not sure if they use the same lab. I'm sure they probably do, uh, do but I have to check the old report. Um, and the levels have increased a little bit in room A. And room A is the main area where we had um, the rain coming in. Yes, it, uh, the, actually the rain came in between A and B, 
Uh, but what Converse is thinking is happening is we had a lot of dry, wall, dry rot in room A, and that's where the mold is breeding. Wow. So the results say that the main room um, is very low in mold right now? Oh, the, the, actually the main room where we hold the, where we used to hold the town board meetings and where everybody gathers is ha, has no issue at all. What are we going to do from here? Well, the town board last night at the town board meeting decided not to open up the main hall to, and then seal off room A and B because Mr. Lewis and I, Matt Lewis, buildings and grounds manager, couldn't guarantee 100% containment of the mold from getting into the main area. So the town board took our recommendation based on the reports and the numbers that were in that report and stated let's go out for RFP at the uh, task force recommendation and let's get the roof repaired. Then we're going to do the remediation and then we're going to do the inside and we're going to open it up for the in open up the entire root center for the community and hopefully we'll have it done by no later than Thanksgiving of this year. Wow, that's going to be fabulous. And we're shooting for that date. Uh, we know how important it is for the holidays and for a lot of the church groups and activity groups that uh, are in and around Pahrump to use the Bob Root Community Center. So Mr. Lewis and I are really going to attack it and hopefully we can get it done by then. And so we're going to put out this RFP. Are we, are we thinking about what, how much it's going to cost at this point? Uh, no, that's what the RFP is going to determine and we're going to do both roofs. At least that's what the town board and uh, task force recommendation was. And the town board, town board accepted it last night, so we're moving forth. Is there any insurance coverage on this at all? Yes, approximately $43,000 will be covered by the uh, in pool and pack. It does not cover the mold remediation and the actual rebuilding of the inside of A and B. That's totally on the town of Pahrump, and we're looking at probably twenty-seven five to 30000 out of our own pocket to do that. And is there any other improvements that we're going to make or changes that we're going to make to the Bob Root Community Center? Not to my knowledge. We're just going to deal with the roof, the remediation, and rebuild A and B, uh, put back all the insulation, the uh, drop, drop uh, ceiling, and uh, new drywall in the areas where we cut it out or where uh, Belfort will ultimately cut it out. Is there any requirements for the people who will be putting in the bids for this because of uh, the problem with mold? And re are we going to retest? Or uh, well, what? The roof is when they, fortunately for the individuals doing the roof, they'll be on the outside of the building. Mm -hmm. So they won't be affected. When the uh, roof is completed, then the individuals coming in will be Belfour, and that's who the insurance company is recommended to come in and do it. Belfour Restoration out of uh, uh, Las Vegas, they will come in and they will do all the restoration, remediation of the mold. And once they get completed, uh, we'll have it tested to make sure it's good. Once it's tested, We'll get certification from both the lab and from Belfort that the work was done. The insurance company signs off. Matt Lewis and his guys would go in and rebuild A and B, and we'll open it up. Will we have a grand reopening? Oh, sure, why not? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Deanna. Have a great day, Perump. Well, the soccer season has begun, but you can still volunteer. If you like sports, being outdoors, and helping kids, you are needed at the AYSO. Soccer season is in full swing. We're here at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park. We're going to speak to the regional director of the AYSO, Carrie Freeze. I'm here at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park with Carrie Freeze, AYSO. Soccer season started. Tell me how it's going. Oh, it's been going great. Last, um, last night we had a little glitch. We had some lightning and we had to cancel our first games, uh, but the second game went, went off great. How many teams do we have? Do you know? Uh, we have approximately about 60 teams um, through U6 through U16. How many kids does that consist of? Uh, we have about, this year, about 480. Wonderful. Yes. So I know that we're utilizing all of Ian Deutsch Memorial Park, all the soccer fields here. Is this mainly where we play the games and do the practices? Yes, it's both practice fields and um, game fields. So how many coaches do we have right now? We have about 60 coaches. And we're looking for volunteers for next year, though, right? We're always looking for volunteers. We have need help refing. You don't even have to have a child here. If you're just interested in soccer and love the game, you could come down and ref, just fill out a volunteer form. We're having a class um, September 18th at 1 o'clock at the town annex over by the swimming pool by the fire station. Oh, really? So people can come to this class? Uh, what time is it? It's at 1 o'clock. It's going to run about six hours. Oh, wonderful. And what does that uh, entail? Um, you're going to be a uh, ref. You could um, ref a game up to U10, and we just need all the help we can get here. <laughs> That'll be for next year, though, right? Not well, for this, this year, year, too. We, we would be able to use them this year, too. Oh. Uh, and next year, yeah, oh, definitely. It's always good to know about the game. And... Do you need any prior experience? No, no prior experience. We will teach you. 
everything you need to know. I was new to this. Uh, I started this in 06. I would played a game while I was a kid. You know, I got involved. I kind of coached. I started refing. I was on the board. Now the regional commissioner. <laughs> How rewarding is that to teach these kids? It's awesome. Coming to these fields, looking at all these kids playing, having a good time. I mean, you can't ask for more. What are we looking forward to in the season? In the season, we're looking for kids to have a good time, improving all their skills. That's one of our uh, player development. And by playoff season, which is um, November, I mean, they're all going to come together and see what they have. Wonderful. For more information, who can they call? Um, you could contact uh, me, 702-767-8416. Uh, in a message to the college community yesterday, Great, ba Great Basin College President Carl Deakins announced his intention to step down from his position in the coming months. In a statement, Deakins said, I am making this announcement at this time because I believe it is the best of the best interest for the college. He also added that in the coming months, Great Basin College will begin planning its budgets for the next biennium and the next legislative season. I believe it is very important that leadership be in place for these events. By stepping down within the coming months, I will be providing sufficient enough time for Great Basin College and the Board of Regents to make a decision about leadership for the future of our college. And four individuals were inducted into Memory Lane at the Pahrump Valley Speedway. Pahrump Valley Speedway Memory Lane where we've done that to try to uh, recognize some of the people that has built this track from day one and is still running today and they're still involved with this track very much so we just want to say a thank you so we're putting them on our memory lane wall to, to, here at the prom track. And Robert Hubman is one of them. You still own the property of the track, right? Yes. Me and uh, a few other people, there's a few of us involved. We've been involved about 17 years and the track originally started in the uh, late 70s, or middle 70s in that area, 78, 77 we started here. So it's uh, it's been going on quite a, quite some time. It's been hard to keep it going. And thanks to Chad, uh, we, he revived this track. We we sold it at one time. The guy went was supposed to keep the track going, and he wasn't able to do so. So we had to take it back. And Chad came in here and took over a track that was dilapidated, equipment stole or it was gone, and a lot of things took place, and uh, he, he took this and built it into a nice track. And I didn't even know Chad at that time. So I went and had lunch with him, enjoyed the conversation. He showed me the paperwork and the things he planned on doing, and so I, I leased him the track, and he's done a great job putting this thing back on his feet. I'm very proud of him. I know it was a big loss for Prump to lose the track for the time that we did and bring it back. How's it going? Is it going? Is it going real strong now? It looks it looks fine. I'm I'm a race fiend, but I've been a little down in the weather for the last two or three months, four months, and so I haven't been out here. This is the first time I've been out for quite a while, but it it looks great. The track's in great shape. It's getting a good turnout. The people that which makes this track work is sitting right out there in the bleachers, and uh, he's got a good crowd tonight. Even though we've had some problems with the. Uh, with the car count stuff with so many races going on. So it shows he's done a great job and the people are steady customers and they're gonna be here whether, if they have a car, they're gonna be here. Uh, we've got a great crowd. So tell me how does it feel to be inducted into the memory lane here? It's very, very important because uh, I, I help, we helped put this thing together many, many years ago. All those concrete blocks out there and stuff came from Caesar's Palace when they, and we was involved in building it from the very start. And there was a lot of people, Wolfenstein and the Floyds and the Mankins, and, and the, I had the Saddle West at that time, so I was financially helping them all I could. And uh, so it's, it's very nice that uh, to have something like this happen. I appreciate Congratulations. It. Chad, tell me how many people we have total now in the memory lane? We only have five because we just started this up. Uh, Jonathan Birch was our first inductee. And, uh, and then the four tonight. And we're gonna try to do at least, uh, you know, two to four every single race for the rest of the year. And hopefully we can get that wall filled up. But again, like I say, we wanna thank these people that's worked so hard through the years to do this, because without them, we wouldn't have this track. Uh, we did go ahead and move our uh, demolition derby. We canceled it. Uh, we're gonna move it back to a later date. Uh, we just didn't have the cars this year. It's harder to find the cars. We have no uh, 
wrecking yards in town right now where we can get cars, where we can buy cars. So it's hard to get cars right now. So if there is people out there that's got these big old tuna boats out there, give us a call here at the Pump Valley Speedway. Let us know if them cars still run where we could use them for demolition derby. We'd appreciate it. The races begin this weekend at 7 p.m. Saturday night. For more information, go to PrumpValleySpeedway.com. And folks, we got a little bit wet today, so yes. we've seen. I left my windows cracked outside during that rain. So you did? I did, so my well, car seats a little I had to walk <laughs> outside during the rain, and I got really wet. Well, we're going to check in with Zach right after the break and see if we're going to have any more of this rain coming up. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Welcome back to News 46. Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Today we do have some rain. It was sprinkling on my way here actually. We are gonna have we had a high of 89 degrees. How often does that happen? Winds to come out of the south southwest at three miles per hour and our gusts at only up to nine miles per hour. And that's what's been unique about this rain and everything lately. It's not been too windy. We're not getting sprayed with it. So it's been nice. We can actually enjoy it. Our pressure is holding steady there at 30.3 and our UV index has gone down a lot at seven, which is high. Our humidity is at 44%, pretty high for us, especially during the day. And sunrise is at 6.25 a.m. Our record for today was back in 1945 at 107 degrees. Tonight, we're looking at some thunderstorms again. I enjoy those, so I'm kind of happy. A low of 71 degrees, winds to come out of the south-southwest at 5 miles per hour, and our gusts at up to 10 miles per hour. Our humidity to be even more high at 56%, and our sunset at 6.53 p.m. Our record for today was back in 1941 at 50 degrees. Tomorrow it's going to be mostly sunny, a high of 92 degrees, low of 71 degrees, winds to come out of the south at 6 miles per hour, and our gusts at up to 14 miles per hour. It's going to be kind of windy again. Our UV index is going back to our usual thing at 8, which is very high, and our sunrise is looking to be at 626 a.m., our humidity at 37%. Thursday, like I said, mostly cloudy. Friday, we're looking at a 20% chance of rain again. Saturday through Wednesday, sunny. Our highs are in the 90s, no triple digits at all so far. Hope that happens. And our overnight lows are, except for Thursday, going to be in the 60s. And today's worst weather was in Marble Hill, Montana, where they had rain and thunder. We know what that's like. Back to you. Well, we've done some remodeling around here at KPVM. Two of our channels, Universal Sports 46.3 and Senior Television 46.4, have switched places. You can now watch all of your favorite classics programming on 46.3 and still catch all the excitement of Olympic sports on 46.4. And we just want to let you know that we are monitoring audio levels on these channels, so if you experience abnormally low sound on either channel, please be sure to let us know by calling 727-9400 or emailing us from our website at kpvm.tv. And make sure you do give us a call. A lot of people are experiencing the audio issues on dot four, and that may be because you have a converter box, but please give us a call and we will let you know. And folks, please be sure to subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter. To subscribe, just visit our website at kpvm.tv and fill in the form right on the main page. The newsletter is filled with top stories, coupons, articles, and more. And tonight at the University of Nevada Cooperative Extension on Calvada and Dandelion, Master Gardeners will answer all of your vegetable gardening questions from 5 to 7 p.m. For more information, call 727-5532. And tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Nye County Administration Building in the Calvada Eye, the public is invited to discuss customer service issues, system issues, rate cost issues, and just about any other issue of concern with this Utilities, Inc. For more information, contact Don Rivard at 702-486-7214. Lots of issues. Indeed. Okay. There will be a concert to benefit Prump Valley High School's music department this Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Sweet Corner Internet Coffee House at 421 South Frontage Road. Come on out and support Pahrump Valley High School's band and the kids. And of course, News 46 will be there supporting this important cause. The Nevada Silver Tappers Carson City or Bust is this, is this week at the Maverick Saloon on Mesquite beginning at 6 p.m. For more information, call 727-7011. 
and the Rotary is holding a $10,000 cash giveaway. Only 300 tickets will be sold, and each ticket includes admittance for two people, heavy appetizers, and one drink each. Plus, one ticket entered into the drawing bin where all prizes are drawn from. Hurry, because tickets sell out early every year. And you can call 702-628-7593 for more information. Okay, and we had an announcement that just came in. Uh, Tire Works on Highway 160 is having their grand opening. That's going to be Thursday starting at 10 a.m. And till when? 10.30 a.m. Until 2 p.m. And they're going to have food and music and all kinds of fun. So they really want everybody to come out. The whole public is invited. So that is this Thursday starting at 10.30 a.m. Tire Works on Highway 160. All right, folks, and that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. And from everyone up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Perov. Good night.